Now I'm going to explain what the cap for is and how you will receive the results. So the cap four stands for cognitive ability test and the four means that it is in its fourth edition. Why do we use cognitive ability tests in school? Well, as you know, your child will be tested in their subjects on a regular basis. And at the end of each term we have in December and May, we kind of have their bigger assessments that aim to measure what they have learned in a subject area. Whereas a cat, a cat, the cat four, a cognitive ability test aims to measure how your child learns. So this will allow us to challenge your child if they have a higher ability in a certain area. And it will also allow us to support your child in the right way if they had a lower ability uh, in an area. So there are four areas that we will assess, and these are called batteries. So students are given four types of tests or batteries, which assess how they think about tasks and solve problems. The first one is called verbal reasoning. And I'm going to give, uh, so I'm just going to give a little explanation of each battery and then some examples of the action, what your child will actually uh, see when sitting the test. So a large part of education is presented through language using words. So assessing this ability helps us to understand a student's general level of attainment. So here we see an example. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys do this. So we have the verbal reasoning battery, and this is uh, basically thinking with words. So at the, the right top right hand corner, we see three words, rain, fog, and sunshine. And then we've got five words underneath and your child has to now figure out which word will come next in that sequence or that will match those words. So think about it for a little while, rain, fog, and sunshine. So what do you think? Okay, so rain, fog, and sunshine. After thinking for a little while, we might say, okay, they are types of weather. So then we're looking for another type of weather. And the only one there in that list is snow. So we know the answer is snow. And then for the second example, we have this a little bit different. It's kind of the relationship between the words. So carpet is to floor as curtain is to what? Window, shade, hang, drapes or cloth. And as we know, a carpet covers a floor and then a curtain will cover a window. And here we just have a little bit of, of a more of an ex, explanation. So we see that the first uh, the first example that we did is called verbal classification. And the second example that we did was verbal analogies. And that's there to pause and read if you'd like. I'll keep moving. So the second uh, battery that we um, test your child on is quantitative reasoning. And this, in other words, the numeracy or working with numbers and thinking in numbers. So next to verbal reasoning, the ability to work with numbers is one of the most frequently required capabilities in education. Fields such as mathematics, science, geography and economics make considerable demands on students' quantitative abilities. A quantitative or numerical reasoning uh, battery, thinking with numbers. OK, so. In our first example, I'm going to challenge you here again on this one. Uh, so one going to two, and then we have five that turns into 10, and then four will turn into what if they follow the same rules? And we can see after a little bit of thinking that the numbers are doubling each time. So I think the answer is going to be eight. So four will turn into eight. The second one is a little bit more difficult. I'll give you a moment to figure it out yourself. And we can see that 18 is the first number. Our third number is 17 and our fifth number is 16. So we see that they're descending by one each time. 
so then it looks like our seventh number is going to be 15 where then that would be the right answer okay and if i sound confident it's because i've given this presentation a few times <laughs> um so the first one we see that's called number analogies and the second one we uh, test on is called number series and again you can just pause if you'd like to read that little bit more information okay our third battery is the non-verbal reasoning this battery assesses the ability to think and reason with non-verbal material it helps us to assess students general cognitive ability by looking at how they solve problems involving shapes. So again, we have our first two batteries, which are verbal and quantitative or numerical. And a lot of school is, is, done, is done through language and numbers, but that's not everything. And we understand that some, some um, students might have difficulty with language or they might have difficulty with numbers. And then this third battery then really gives us a chance if there was a low ability in either of those areas and then they actually had a high nonverbal, you know, we saw high nonverbal reasoning, we might know that there's actually, and that can help us to catch sometimes if a, if a student has difficulty with uh, language or, if a, or with numbers. So let's see what a nonverbal reasoning battery looks like. So this is thinking with shapes and we see in the top right hand corner. So this is a little more difficult to explain. I'm just going to read that three designs are presented, which are similar in some way or ways from a selection of five possible answers. The student must identify a fourth design with similar properties. So we could see they've chosen the um, answer E and we'll see the answer is e because it is the only answer choice that is a, stri a striped semicircle like the first three figures okay so yeah when we look at that it makes sense that that's the next one that would match those or come in the sequence then down to the arrows design and this is figure matrices um designs are presented in a grid with one empty square and from a selection of five possible answers, the student must identify the missing design. So the answer here is C, because in the top pair, one arrow up goes to two arrows up. So in the second pair, one arrow down must go to two arrows down, which makes sense. And the last one then is spatial ability. So this is the fourth battery. And again, just like, um, not the, the non-verbal um, reasoning. This battery assesses the ability to think and reason with non-verbal material, but involves spatial awareness. It helps us to assess students' ability to solve problems involving shapes and space. So a lot of subjects with a practical element would maybe look up your um, a student's spatial ability. Um, and again, you know, if if they could challenge them if the spatial ability is high and offer more support if the spatial ability was low. Here we just see what it's like, the, the battery of thinking with shape and space. So let's look at this top one. It's a little, and we, I suppose this just shows that it's not the easiest of tests to be completing. Uh, we see a series of diagrams shows a square being folded repeatedly and then punch through with holes. From a selection of five possible answers, the student must identify how the paper will appear when unfolded. The answer here is D. The hole is punched through both layers of paper, so as it is unfolded, the holes will be a mirror image of each other, with the crease being the mirror line. Okay, hopefully that makes sense, and you can just maybe pause it if you need a bit more time to figure that one out and look at it. Then the next example, we see figure recognition. And again, you see the shape at the bottom right. You're looking, the, the student, as it explains there, the student will be looking for the image where that shape fits into exactly. And that is E, as it is the only one where the, the shape at the bottom there um, actually kind of slots into E there. And again, you can just pause that if you'd like to read the bit on figure recognition. Okay, so that is our four uh, batteries. And here now we have 
I just I want to show you what you will receive in the individual report for parents and we'll post this out um, by February when we get the results. Um, it, it could be the end of January. So um, this is what you'll receive in the post. Um, again, this is just a sample uh, student and I just put the abilities in there so we could see. Um, I want to just talk a little about a few things here. We see the profile uh, word and then we see the four batteries listed, verbal, quantitative, nonverbal and spatial. What we have in the yellow is what we call average. And now I just want to address that word because sometimes if, well, if somebody told me I was average at something, I might be a little bit insulted. But when it comes to cognitive ability tests, the vast majority of us will just fall into an average range. Okay, when compared with our peers the same age, basically. What we're often looking for in the ability tests is if maybe, as I said, if there's a very high ability, we're looking to maybe challenge that, that child in that ability. And if there was a low ability, we're looking to offer support to that child so that they don't feel like they're falling behind in any subjects. Um, and I suppose at this point, I really want to emphasize how we use these reports so you'll receive this report which is a parent report and then our teachers also receive a um, a report which kind of gives a lot of advice on how best to kind of cater their classes for your child specifically but what we really want to emphasize is that we never use these reports or the results of these reports to judge anyone um this all it is is a snapshot in time um so like we've just looked at the four exam you know the, the the examples from the different tests that they'll complete i mean that it's going to be it's a three hour kind of over the stint of two and a half hours to three hours and th your child will give their best go at it now does that mean we should be kind of weighing or judging children just based on how they did in a two and a half hour assessment absolutely not this report is just to kind of inform us and as I, I use that word kind of catch maybe some areas you know so if somebody was had a very low verbal ability um but then they might have a very high non-verbal ability well then that would say just for example that might show that actually there it's just working thinking in language that's the problem it's not thinking overall because they're not if their nonverbal ability was very high then that would show that their th their thinking skills might be fine it's just if the verbal ability was low then we might go okay there might be something going on there with language and we could maybe test for dyslexia Right. So that's just an example of how we could use these tests. So, so let's say if your child didn't score low in a in an ability, again, that is not something that is used to kind of demean your child or to look down upon them. Not at all. It's, it's just the opposite. In fact, we want every child here in Grange Community College to reach their full potential. And by finding out everybody's ability, that is then we can actually kind of set targets and we can aim for success because it's important that everybody feels success and say like me i'm not good with numbers not good numerically so in school if my school knows that i'm not great with numbers then that means maybe my math teacher knows that 60 percent in an exam is a really good result for me instead of just pushing everybody for the 90 percent and the 100 percent i mean because we just know that that's unrealistic so basically this allows just us to kind of cater our education towards your you know your child's exact abilities and to determine what success looks like for them okay so in the individual report, report for parents as well just the last sentence at the bottom i'll read this will be accompanied by written recommendations to help improve your understanding of your child's learning preference with suggestions for how to offer support at home. And this is really important, I think, to have a look at these because they're very, it's very kind of practical advice and things that you can do at home to, um, I suppose, to support your child at home and their, their learning at home. Um, as I said, the, we as teachers receive 
a report as well with kind of you know specific recommendations as well on how to best support your child in their abilities okay so look thank you very much and um, that is the end of the presentation uh, thanks for listening and i look forward to hopefully meeting you all at some time soon okay thanks very much bye